Hello, everybody. So, I'm going to talk to you during this presentation about JS.JavaScript, and in particular, why using JS.JavaScript from a CTO point of view. First, a little intro. What is JS.JavaScript? It is JavaScript to JavaScript compiler. So, it reads JavaScript with a JSDAG, and it outputs a code which can attest with GSDoc. It's going to make sure that your GSDoc is respected when your JavaScript is running. So let's do that step by step to make it more clear. You take your file. This is JavaScript on GSDoc. You got some JavaScript here where you add two numbers and return the result. You got uh, drag and drop out, not easy to do on that. You got here the just dark forehead, this is numbers. And after that, this is a bad guy. You run on numbers with an error. You run on numbers, but you pass string foo on bar instead of numbers. What happens if you are running that with plain JavaScript? Let's run that as plain JavaScript. We use that node for that, node main.js, and it returns foo bar. This is normal. This is foo plus bar added at a string. So the, I, the error is silently ignored by plain JavaScript. This is not good. Let's see what happens if we compile it to JavaScript. First, we install a compiler. Simple stuff, sudo npm install as usual. Then we compile the source. We have main.js and we use this command line, usual syntax. When we run that, this is where the magic happened to SA. Suddenly, you know that your argument one is a string but should be a number. Argument two is the same and the, res the result value as well. This is it. This is the main interest of JS.JavaScript. It makes sure that your JSDoc is respected during execution. And if it isn't, it warns you immediately. So, what is JS.JavaScript? This is JSDoc JavaScript. It tests your JavaScript with JSDoc. So, why using it? Suppose you're a CTO. Well, they say a lot of good things, like it I dynamic type checking to JavaScript. It tests your, your JavaScript with JSDoc. It detects new family of error. It is painless to integrate, or many other features that we're going to see during this talk. There is some more info in this website, if you like it. JSDoc.js.org. You go there, you got videos, explanation, where to talk to me, basic things like that. On GitHub repository, obviously, all that is documented, as you can see, on open source under MIT license. So, what do I mean now that we have just that JavaScript? We know where to find it. What does that mean to have a CTO point of view? Ew. CTO is short for a person using large code base. It is responsible to keep it running over time. And you take a decision which can impact a team of people. Many people are going to be impacted by your decision. So I use CTO as short for all voice. You don't have to be CTO. You can have another title or you can do that on an open source project, whatever. If you have this kind of responsibility, this talk is for you, looking at you. So, why your CTO would use JSDoc JavaScript? First, JSDoc JavaScript is easy to learn. You all know JavaScript, this is JavaScript function. You know JSDoc, this is JSDoc. So, you already know JSDoc JavaScript. This is only that, JSDoc JavaScript is JSDoc plus JavaScript. This is nothing more than that.
And this is a nice part of it. So just talk JavaScript is easy to learn. It's just two things, just talk and JavaScript, you know JavaScript, you know just talk. You already know just talk JavaScript. This is cool. So why using just talk JavaScript besides that? Another cool thing is it's painless to integrate. You keep your code. The source is JavaScript compatible. You don't this is basic normal expected JavaScript. You keep your doc as well. JS doc is the standard format for it. So this is a cool part. There is no impact on your code base. You don't have to commit to JS doc JavaScript. You can easily add JS doc JavaScript in your code base or remove it. It's not like a new language. So JS doc JavaScript is painless to integrate. Quite cool feature. Besides that, why using js.javascript? You can use it because it detects a new family of error. You know when you are passing a wrong number of arguments to a JavaScript function? Or suppose you need to have a number and a property and suddenly you pass a string? A string containing a number but as a string? Or when you have private function called from where it shouldn't be. All those functions are common in code base and even more if you have a large code base, right? So plain JavaScript silently ignore all those errors, which make it frustrating when you code. Just talk JavaScript warn you immediately. This is a good part of it. You test if your JS doc is respected. All those errors disappear. You no more waste time for that. So finding bug is good. Well, bug are not exactly good news, but better to find bug before you use it see them, right? So bug found early make them easier to fix as well. So your users see less bug and your team spend less time fixing bug. All that make your code more stable. Now, what else can, would be a good reason to use JS.js? One good reason is it helps document your code. Documented your code is good. It makes your code base easier to learn. Good for in a large team where people come and go. And developers don't like to write documentation, unfortunately. So you got a kind of weird balance where documentation is good but it's hard to get it because people don't like to write it. Just JavaScript can help on this matter. It creates a virtuous cycle. Documenting is good for your developer. Testing is good for your user. So the more you document your code, the safer it becomes. This is quite cool. So, why using JavaScript, J GS doc JavaScript, my bad? Well, as I said, it is easy to learn. It is painless to integrate. It detects a new family of error. And it helps you document your code. So check it out. GS doc JavaScript dot org. GS doc JS dot org, my bad. By Jerome. It was me. See ya, everybody.